This tutorial is going to look at how to use my two packages of interactive R tutorials, Adventure and Discover, which is the more recent one. And both of these packages contain a series of interactive tutorials that teach you R. So it's like an in, it's kind of like a handout where you can practice doing R. So it will explain how to do things and then you get opportunities to write some R code within the uh, the tutorial and see what, you know, see how it works. This is great for learning R. One of the problems of it is that you don't get too much practice at kind of using R within R Studio. So good for learning code, not so good for uh, learning kind of how you actually uh, use the code kind of in the real world. So the purpose of this video is really to explain a workflow that helps you to get, get the best of both worlds, really learn R through the tutorials, but also get some practice at applying it within R Studio. So I've got R Studio here and I would suggest setting up an R Studio project within which you do all the tutorials and save all your work. So it's all in kind of one place. So to do that, open the file menu and the new project. You can either create a new directory, which is probably what you're going to do most of the time, but you can also choose a directory that already exists if you want. We're going to create a new one and then we'll click on new project. And then we want to give uh, this project a name and, and the, that will be the name of the directory or folder that it creates. So I'm going to call this my fun key R adventure, which is kind of overstating how much fun it's going to be, but always good to set your expectations of fun high at the beginning. And this folder is going to be created wherever we tell our studio to create it and we can tell it where to create it by clicking on the browse button and navigating to wherever it is we want to create it. So, you, you know, you could put it anywhere really. I've, I'm actually going to choose to put it in my university's OneDrive account and in the documents folder. And so that's what I'm going to select. So this is now saying that my R Studio project called My Funky R Adventure is going to be created within my documents folder within my university OneDrive. So having set all of that up, click on create projects or create project. R Studio will have a little reboot. And now within the files pane, we can see one file, My Funky R Adventure, that is your R Studio project, but it has been created within a folder of the same name. So you can use this bar here to navigate up and down. So if we navigate out of that folder, you can see within my documents folder, I now have this uh, directory called My Funky R Adventure. That is where my R Studio project lives and that's where we're going to save all our files. So let's get back inside that folder and we're going to create two folders that are going to be helpful uh, in terms of organizing our files. Um, the first is going to be called data. So I've clicked on new folder data okay and whenever I work in R I keep everything lowercase and I always use underscores and that's uh, I would suggest you do the same and we're also going to create a folder to put all of our R documents and so I'm going to call that R underscore docs you can call it what you know call it Freddy the frog if you like but um, that's what I always call the folder that I put my R docs in um, so there you go, that's our project set up. We can now think about running a tutorial. So how do we run a tutorial? Well, once you've installed the packages, so if you've in installed the discover package, for example, um, if you go up here, to the, you should see a tutorial pane. And if you don't see the tutorial pane, it's because your version of RStudio is too old. So if you're not seeing a tutorial pane, go to the RStudio website and download a more recent version. Uh, I mean, preferably the most recent version of RStudio. And when you boot that up, you, you'll see a tutorial pane. So we click on that. And within this pane, all of the tutorials that are kind of installed within R will be listed. So any packages that you've installed that have tutorials, uh, they'll be listed in this pane. So I have both of my packages installed because I'm a raging egotist and I like to bask in the glory of my own work as often as possible. So you can see I've got a bunch of tutorials listed here from my adventure package. 
and if we go down far enough you can see I've also got a bunch of tutorials from my discover package so all you have to do is find the tutorial you want to run in the list so let's say we're going to run this one and click on the button that says start tutorial and guess what it will start the tutorial oh except it won't it's thrown up a dialog box and this dialog box is like any dialog box a source of panic to most of us uh, because it requires us to make a decision but all this dialog box is telling you is that there is um, an R package that the tutorial uses that you don't have installed yet. So when a uh, tutorial runs, R does a little check of whether it has all the packages that it needs to run the tutorial. And if it doesn't have one or several, this message will appear. And it's just saying that to run this tutorial, you need ggplot2 in this case. Would you like me to install it for you? Um, and so the answer is yes and you can just click on OK. So what it does is it, it'll install any packages you need and then it compiles the tutorial, which can take a bit of time. So there you go. Tutorial is compiled and it appears in the tutorial pane, which of course is small. So Another thing you can do, there's a button up here and that will allow you to open this tutorial up in a separate window, which I think in general is probably a good idea. So let's open it up in a separate window. So here we have lovely tutorials, loaded guff at the beginning. Da, 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 da. Tells you how to use it all etc 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 now at some point at the beginning of each tutorial there's um, a list of data files that the tutorial uses now like i said you can actually access the data files directly because you're you know they all sort of come with the package but i think it's good practice to rehearse over and over again how to get data files in and out of R because uh, it really can be quite confusing. So the first thing I would do is click on each of these and it will um, take you to, uh, it will take you out to my website to grab the file and opt to save the file. And that's gonna save it in your downloads folder. So that's now save that file, jimneycricket.csv in our downloads folder. And for each of these data files, we're gonna copy it across to our RStudio project. So our RStudio, I'm gonna find out the RStudio project. So remember I put it in my OneDrive account, in documents, my funky R adventure. And I created a folder called data precisely so that I can copy these files in. So I've just copied jimneycricket.csv over to my data folder. And I do this with the other CSVs as well. So save notebook. Get our finder window back. Get our data folder open and get our downloads open. So we've now got notebook in there, copy that across and so on and so forth. So at the start of each tutorial, just download the data into your data folder. Now, once you've done that, if you go over to the files pane in our studio and click on your data folder, there are your CSV files. So we're saving the data as we go along. So I accidentally used the time travel R package and have found myself two years in the future from when I started uh, this recording. Um, so I'm updating it because things have changed a bit in our studio and uh, now uh, we can use uh, a document creation package called Quarto. 
So <laughs> I'm changing the end of this recording. I was gonna wear the same Iron Maiden t-shirt just for continuity and try and like style out the fact that um, I might have recorded this all in one go. But you know, what the hell. Um, it's two years on, I still have no hair, but I do have a different Iron Maiden t-shirt. So at this point, um, you've started a tutorial and I would create a new document in our studio and we are gonna create a um, quarto document, so a new file, quarto document. And we're gonna give it a title, so visualizing data. And I'm gonna put our name in there. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. And I'm assuming here, I mean, actually I tend to uh, use the, the text editor for uh, Quarto, but I'm gonna assume that uh, you're using the visual editor. So this is the visual editor in Quarto. We've made ourselves a document and we're gonna use these documents as a kind of learning journal of what we're doing. And that will allow us to get some practice at um, uh, d doing the stuff in the tutorials, but within the context of our studio. So let's have a look. We've got our tutorial up and running. Let's say we decide uh, we're gonna do a box plot. So we're in this part of the tutorial. We've got some code here that tells us how to do a box plot. We've read all this stuff. We run the code from within the tutorial and that gives us the aforementioned box plot. I might not think, okay, uh, I wanna remember how to do this. I'm gonna put it in my learning journal. So we could copy this code and then back in our Quarto document, uh, we're gonna change this heading to uh, say, I don't know, box plots and let's get rid of all this stuff. Um, write ourselves some notes. I've just made a box plot. I am so excited. And then we'll insert a code chunk and I'm just, I'm pasting in the code. So what we're get, getting here is a record of the code we used and uh, you know, kind of what it did. So I might have, I might make some notes on this about what the code actually means. I'm not gonna do it now, but you know, you might make some some notes, things that you wanna remember. Uh, and then you can execute the code, see if it works. Oh, it doesn't work. Uh, what's the error message telling us? Oh, it's telling us that the object wish tib is not found. Well, that's the data. So the first thing, we've forgotten to load in the data. And that is because uh, we didn't read the introduction of the tutorial properly <laughs> because there's a bit, uh, that's the old version of this video. Uh, there's a bit that says data. To work outside of this tutorial, you need to download the data. We've already done that. So we've got some code here that tells us how to read in the data. So we need this wish tip, do uh, wish tip data. So we could copy this code and I don't know, maybe let's put a code chunk right at the beginning where we load in our data doesn't really matter where you put it. So we could load in the data there. There we go. So that, all, despite all the red text, that means the data's been loaded in. And then now, when we execute our code here, oh, okay, we get another error. Uh, it's telling us it can't find the function AES. Um, okay, well that's because we also forgot to read the bit about packages. So for stuff to work outside of the tutorial, you have to uh, load the packages that the tutorial needs um, into your Quarto document. So in this case, um, it tells us here it uses some tidyverse packages. So let's load in the tidyverse. So up in our code chunk here, do library tidyverse re-execute that code chunk. And now down here, wait. So what this is doing, or the, the sort of function of keeping a kind of learning journal is it's 
helping us to remember to do these things that get things to work outside of the tutorial. Within the tutorial environment, I've preloaded packages, I've preloaded the data, you don't have to do that stuff. But obviously when you're analyzing your own data, you are gonna to have to load in data, you are gonna to have to load packages. So it's a useful way to get practice at setting up your, uh, your document and um, also, like I said, keeping a learning journal. I think that's important, making notes about the things, uh, you know, the code and what in the code is is confusing you or, you know, did you have some kind of massive R-related epiphany while you were running a piece of code that you want to make a note of. And if we store this, if we then save our uh, Quarto document within our project in our docs, let's call this, uh, Visualizing data. I've switched misspelling there uh, from earlier on. Now in our Rdocs folder, we have we have that kind of that learning journal there. And of course, you could, if you really want to, render that document into uh, a nice or <laughs> a nice HTML file as well. Totally up to you. Okay, so that's what I suggest you do. I uh, hope the packages are useful. Good luck on your uh, adventure.